Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whatever the case may be. Welcome as we continue our devotional journey through the Psalms. I am Pastor Gary James, and today's Psalm is Psalm 16. Please take a few moments to hit your pause button, grab your Bibles, and read Psalm 16. Welcome back, and let's begin. From beginning to end, Psalm 16 testifies to a life that finds its ultimate rest in God's protective presence. Also very fitting for the Easter season because it prophesies the resurrection and identifies God as one who creates, supports, and protects life for all who trust in him and ensures us that all that is good and needed is found in the presence of God, David's refuse. Just as Jesus walked his journey to the cross with an unflinching attitude of trust, through David's words, we see that if we walk with that same attitude and trust in God, we too will find satisfaction and security. In verses 1 and 2, David expresses his confidence in God with a beautiful description of a life of faith and that his faith is the lens through which he views everything in the world. He publicly confesses that because of his faith, he knows that the Lord is out in front of him, leading the way on his lifelong journey. Just as David trusted the Lord with a deep and abiding sense of peace in his heart, we too can gain that same sense of peace and security, knowing that we cannot control everything in our lives, and it's not God's will that we should be able to. We just need to have faith and trust that our Lord will look after that which we can't control on our behalf. In David's words, preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge, we see that God is the source of his strength. The Apostle Paul expressed a similar thought in Philippians when he said, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. David, like the Apostle Paul, finds strength in the Lord, making his fears manageable. So as we, God's people, travel our journeys of faith, we need to let God use his spirit to work in our hearts and minds so that our fears won't gain hold and control us, allowing us to face adversity without being shaken. David learned the basic truth that apart from his faith in God, he possessed nothing worthwhile and that everything good that he had came from the Lord. And the same is true for you and me. The non-negotiables of our Christian faith certainly tell us that all religions do not lead to the same God. And David spoke this because he had seen with his own eyes that people who follow false gods have all kinds of trouble in their lives. The word he uses is sorrow. And that's still true today. These people do not experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. Of course, in our, multi, in our multicultural and politically correct world, such comments are rejected as out of date and insensitive. But that doesn't make them any less true. The God of the Holy Scriptures wants to be close to his people. He wants to be present with them. He wants to stand at their right hand. He wants to protect them. In verse 5, we see that David knows that God has assigned him his chosen portion and cup. For him, the chosen portion is his share of material blessing, and the cup refers to the practice of passing the wine to a guest at a feast or a meal. For Christians, the cup reminds us of the cup of the Lord in Holy Communion and his presentation of divine grace. Like the psalm writer, we too should be thankful that God has assigned this cup to us and consider the share of material blessings we have been given as secondary to the spiritual blessings we have received. Just as David knew he was richly blessed, he wants us, the listeners, to experience the same thing. David understood that God has laid out the boundaries for human behavior and shows his people how to find the path of life and use it as their guide to their life. The boundaries are not oppressive and are given for our own good. Honoring them brings us freedom, not bondage. Through the psalm, we see how God counseled David by means of his word. In the quiet, thoughtful moments of daily life, God, God guides his servant. God speaks to us through our devotions, personal and group Bible study. He speaks to us in worship, not only with the message, but with song and prayer. And without a doubt, we hear him best when distractions are at a minimum. In verse 11, David tells us what he looks forward to when he says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. David knew that the Lord would not abandon him, and that even after death, 
his relationship with the Lord would not be broken. Just as the Apostle Paul said in Romans that neither life, death nor life nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. David joins all believers in looking forward to the eternal blessings at God's right hand. For you and me, that's the promise of eternal life, lived out in God's holy presence. In summary, David realizes with gratitude in his heart that God's wise counsel has continually guided him, giving him a wonderfully positive outlook at life. When you think about it, biblical faith is a positive faith. Our faith begins with trust. That trust leads to hope. And you and I have every reason to be joyful and optimistic in a world with so much bad news, so much violence, so much misunderstanding, so much plain ignorance, we have reason to hope. And the basis of our hope is the life, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus. In him, we have life in this world and in the next. In him, we have hope. And that hope overcomes despair. We close with prayer. God of all grace, the boundaries you established in my baptism enfold me. May your loving son always be my refuge and strength in this weary land. It is in his name we pray. Amen.